Today, we're going to talk about the basics of English pronunciation improvements. I'm Rebecca, hello, and welcome back. I'm an English pronunciation instructor, I'm an accent modification coach, and I'm also a speech language pathologist, and I'm here to help teach you the basics before we get onto the really high level stuff, because Understanding the basics is going to dramatically improve your pronunciation skills when you know the parts of your mouth and what parts to change and adjust. You just kind of speed through the instruction because you understand what it is that I'm asking you to do. Okay, so let's talk about anatomy a bit and the parts of the mouth and the lips, the jaw, the tongue, how those are adjusted. And then when we talk about specific sounds, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? You might have noticed, just in general, there may be some sounds that are very different in the North American English pronunciation than your first language. And many of my clients usually mention at some point, they're like, like, you know, you guys really open your mouth a lot. <laughs> um, there's a lot of ah sounds and ah sounds, and it involves a lot more of an open mouth. Or you might think, many clients say this to me, you know, you guys are using the tip of your tongue a lot more. Once we start talking about the tongue and positions and that, they start to realize, oh, we're using the tip of your tongue. And, and I don't typically do that with my first language. So knowing and being aware of the parts of your tongue, what's actually moving and what is going where when you're speaking will just speed up your progress, okay? So when you're working on a sound, you're going to get it and you'll be able to feel your issues in your mouth, be able to feel how to adjust it rather than guessing. Okay, I hope you get where I'm going here. I'm going to introduce you to this um, really gross <laughs> rubber mouth. This has seen some years. Okay, so I always use this little model of a mouth for the clients that I work with because it really, really helps to see how the mouth is moving and the parts of our mouth. So I'm going to be using this crazy thing a little bit, um, so don't get grossed out. I, it's mostly just the paint that's come off of it. It's, it's not that dirty. <laughs> It's fairly clean. It just looks like the guy's enamel has been worn off quite a bit. Okay, I need a new one. You don't have to say it. So what I wanna talk about first is the most basic portion of our speaking is our jaw, okay? So we don't often talk about our jaw, but in pronunciation, there are some sounds in English that involve opening our jaw a lot more. So you can see ah, 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 that opening is going to be something I want you to pay attention to. So when I talk about keeping your jaw closed, that's when your teeth are not clenched together, but they're kind of resting together and your jaw is up and closed. Something like uh, uh, the U sound in English, as in sun, sun, sun. My teeth are together. So that's a closed jaw position. Then we might have something a little bit more open, like an eh, eh, as in bed. B-E-D, bah, eh, eh, eh. My teeth are slightly apart, my jaw is slightly open, but it's not very open. Ah, eh, ah, eh. And then of course you can see that last position where my tongue and my mouth and my jaw, everything is open and my jaw is very low and open. Ah, 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 ah. So being aware of neutral or closed, slightly open and very open, is something to be aware of when we talk about vowels. The second thing to consider is our lips. In all languages, we have different lip positions, but let's talk about, there are typically four in a North American accent. The number one is neutral. So that means do nothing. Do nothing with your lips, just let them be relaxed. So we would do this for like an uh, 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 uh sound. Uh-oh, <laughs> okay. Our lips are in neutral position. We also have sounds that involve a spread lip position, like an E. It's like a smile, but you're really spreading your lips into a smile, e, e, e. We do this also with S sounds like S or Z. And then we also have a rounded position. So a sound like ooh, 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 ooh has quite a rounded position. And in many languages, the rounding isn't as pronounced. It's not as rounded. So in a North American position, ooh, you're going to see that really tight rounding. So you wouldn't have the word shoo, shoo, shoo. Really get that rounded lip or shoes I put on my feet. Rounding, spread, and neutral. And then we also have one really interesting one. It's kind of an anomaly. It's the uh, 
uh. And this is in words like look or good or buck. And notice my lips aren't in an ooh position. They're not spread, they're uh. So it's slightly like a big circle and pushed out a bit, protruded, uh. Uh, so think of it like a really lazy ooh, okay? Um, but essentially those are the lip positions you want to be aware of. If you found even a tiny bit of this lesson helpful to you and you learned something, please find that little mitten hand thumbs up guy, please press him because I want to be able to share this information with other people who are also struggling with their English pronunciation. And I know it's not just a little thing. For some people, being misunderstood is, it's really, really a frustrating and horrible experience. And so I wanna help as many people as I can. And by you clicking that, you're able to help spread the word. So thank you, thank you. Last but not least, of course, the most important, is your tongue position. And we'll talk about the parts of the tongue. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's do this with my little rubber mouth here. We're going to talk about the parts of the tongue and different sounds that exist. The tip of your tongue, when I say the tip of your tongue, I'm referring to the very end of your tongue. This part of your tongue is the part that we use for sounds like TH, the, 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 or when we press it up on the roof of our mouth, the, the, the. Duh. So the tip of our tongue presses up right behind the front top teeth. Duh, duh, duh. So that's the tip of the tongue. We also use the middle. I just call it the middle. I mean, we can be very specific, but the middle of your tongue is the part we're paying attention to for vowels, especially. So when I talk about an e, 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 e sound, the middle of your tongue is going to be pressed really high towards the palate. So let's talk about the palate next after this. So the middle of your tongue is this entire portion. The back of your tongue, often people can't feel this part of your tongue. This is a lot further than you think. So when you say a sound like the K sound, some people can feel this, some people can't, you're going to feel, hopefully, the back of your tongue touching on the roof of your mouth really quickly. So it looks more like this, this part of your tongue pressing up on the roof of your mouth or your palate. So that is the back of your tongue. Feels a lot further back than you might expect. We do also use the sides of our tongue for a few sounds, which we can talk about in another lesson, but the sides of your tongue are of course on the side. So not too crazy there. Let's talk about the palate. Of course, it's very important. So this is the roof of the mouth or the palate, um, that entire portion. The one thing to be very aware of is what we call the alveolar ridge or also known as the bump. So behind your front top teeth, you're going to notice this ridge here. It's like a little bumpy and it sticks out a bit. If you put your tongue behind your teeth, you're going to feel a bump. And then of course it goes way high up on the palate. So that bump is called your alveolar ridge. And this is where we place our tongue for certain sounds. So if we make an S sound, some people will place their tongue a little closer on the bump, some people a little closer to the teeth. Everyone's a little different. Pay attention to where your tongue is going for different sounds like a ta-ta-ta-ta sound. What's touching what? And what part of your tongue is touching what part of your palate? Start to pay attention to these things. Of course, a speech language pathologist would be thinking about this stuff all the time. It's stuff we love, but you may not have thought about it. Start thinking about different sounds you make, like a Ooh, sound. What part of your tongue is touching the roof of your mouth? Or a g g g sound. Test them out and see what you feel. And the reason I tell you to do this is because feeling your tongue position and your lip position and your jaw position will bring you a great deal of improvement when you're working on sounds that you don't know how to produce. So when we talk about some really hard stuff like R's, for example, um, we will be talking about the lip position and your tongue and parts of your tongue doing some crazy stuff. Okay, so if you're interested in learning additional information about sounds of English and how to correct those trouble issues that you're having, keep watching this channel. Keep looking for the new videos. I'm going to walk you through everything eventually. If you've found that a little bit useful, 
I want to encourage you to watch this video on the International Phonetic Alphabet. It makes learning pronunciation so much easier because, as we all know, the spelling of English makes no sense as compared to how we pronounce the words. And it will help you when you learn all of the English pronunciation lessons that we have here just to kind of learn some basics. So I encourage you to go there and check out that lesson next. If you're looking for additional information on how to really speed up your process of improvement for your English pronunciation, check out my website. I've got lots of information there. You can actually do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. You can find a course, you can find my book on Amazon or my audiobook. Those are all really great resources if you're looking for additional information. And of course, just stick around and check out my channel. I will be posting lots of new information just like this with lots of extra special practice. So keep an eye on it. Okay, I'll see you next time.